This wonder kid, once sought after by Liverpool and Juventus, has now disappeared from the FIFA club record at just 24 years of age. He's listed as a free agent on transfer marked with no attached club. Why? His name's Han Kwang Song, and he's from North Korea. Now, you might be wondering how a North Korean player actually got so close to European stardom and was purchased at one point for over $7 million. But that story actually starts in 2012 in North Korea with a leadership change. You probably didn't expect North Korean politics in this video. You also probably didn't expect me to be bald, in case you didn't notice. Well, we raised over $8,000 for South Bronx United in a charity stream on Twitch, and you guys got to vote on Twitch on my new hairstyle, and naturally, you picked the only one without any hair on top of my head. So I went to a barber shop and got my head shaved, and now you're probably gonna go blind and back to North Korean politics. Now, according to Christopher Green, who's an academic at Leiden University in the Netherlands and definitely knows more about this than I do because he's interviewed hundreds of North Korean defectors, Kim Jong Moon comes to power in 2012 and suddenly the physical education curriculum focused much more on football. Part of this process was not just domestic training but finding academies in Europe where North Korean players could actually get European coaching, compete against European competition and develop into potentially world-class players. Maybe. Kind of. Sort of. In the beginning the North Korean Federation had an agreement with an academy in Spain but the players only stayed there for one year and they came to us instead. Says Mauro Costarella and Costarella would no, because he's the head of the Italian academy that became the home for a whole team of U-17 North Korean players. Mauro Costarella runs the ISM Academy in Italy, and this was all made possible because North Korea and Italy actually have a very unusually friendly footballing relationship. This dates back to 1966, when North Korea, in its first World Cup, which was actually played in England, it's the one that England won, North Korea actually made the quarterfinals of that tournament, and they made the quarterfinals by beating the Italian national team. Over the decades after, Italian politician Antonio Razzi has become a good personal friend of Kim Jong-un. Yes, that is a real thing. Razzi was integral in setting up a way for North Korean youngsters to be able to train in Europe at an Italian academy, essentially providing them with education visas and an opportunity to be scouted. Mauro Costarella says they then sent a delegation to North Korea to find the best talent, and they came back with a whole team of U-17 players that would then be training at their academy. And it became apparent pretty quickly that Han Kwang Song was the best of this bunch. Which probably should have been obvious. At the U16 Asian Championships, he captained the U16 North Korean side and finished second on the golden boot list behind a South Korean player who was from the Barcelona Academy. At the U17 World Cup a year later, he helped lead North Korea to the freaking knockouts of that tournament. Well, all this is happening, Han Kwang Song is actually not signed to a club yet, so this starts a bit of a circus for teams competing for his signature. Namely, Liverpool was very high on Han Kwang Song and sent Chief Scout Barry Hunter to go talk to him. And this is where the most famous story that I heard about four years ago around Han Kwang Song comes from. Because Barry Hunter, as these guys often do, have a sales pitch to try and recruit talented young players to come to their club. And that sales pitch that he tees up for at the end is... Well, you'll get to meet Steven Gerrard if you come. But this is honestly so great, I'm just gonna go ahead and read you exactly what happened, according to somebody that was in the room. Han Kwang Song sat in silence. For a moment, there was an awkward pause. The Liverpool scout waited in anticipation, but he received nothing back. Han sat there with a blank expression. The scout said, Do you know Steven Gerrard? Han shook his head. The scout was very surprised. He said, How is it possible you don't know Steven Gerrard? The scout turned around and said it was the first time he showed a picture of Gerrard to someone, and they did not instantly go, wow. To Han's credit, to humanize him in this story a bit, apparently both sides found it funny and Han was laughing and apologizing for not knowing who Steven Gerrard was. He's not just a, a cybernetic AI human being that has no actual feeling and emotion. He is a person. Important to remember that because we're about to get into the political side of this story, which we haven't hit on already. The issue for Barry Hunter in Liverpool is that even if they'd been able to convince him to go there and really, really wanted to sign him and put the offer on the table, the British government probably would would have vetoed it because sanctions against North Korea being what they are and the inability to track the wage that's being paid to Han Kwang Song, which if it's in line with other foreign laborers from North Korea, about 80% of it is going straight to the regime in North Korea. But Italy has a bit of a soft spot for this. He's able to sign for Cagliari in Serie A. Now we go back to Mauro Costarella for this. When he signs for the team, he travels to Cagliari and scores a hat trick in a friendly training match with the reserves, so they immediately send him to the first team. And in the first team, he scores a goal in his debut coming off the bench. This prompts even news sites like CNN to 
to start writing articles about this miraculous 18 year old North Korean that's scoring goals in Italy's top league. He's obviously the first North Korean to play and score in Syria. But at just 18 years of age, he couldn't lock down a regular spot in Cagliari's first team. So he gets loaned to Perugia in the Syria B, the second division of Italy. At 18 years old, he scored a hat trick on his debut and provided 16 goal contributions at his time at Perugia. And he became a bit of a worldwide attention grabbing starlet. I knew who he was because I play football manager all the time. He became so popular, he was invited on the sports show La Dominica Sportiva. Now, I don't know what that is, but it's a big deal in Italy. And as he was waiting in his hotel room in Milan, this is where being North Korean finally and fully came back to bite this kid. Because as he's waiting in that hotel, about to go on the show, about to be taken to go on the show, they get a call from a generic minister who doesn't even really identify himself and it blocked everything. The clubs became frustrated because they couldn't negotiate anything when it came to Han's marketability or what he could and couldn't do. Negotiating was impossible because Pyongyang want to talk only and exclusively with Han. The situation with their government has become even more rigid and their footballers have been prohibited from appearing on TV otherwise they would have been repatriated. Han is scared. You have to remember that it's not just about Han either. His entire family is in North Korea and that is something that is obvious leverage if Han were to attempt to defy anything that he is told to do while being allowed to play in Italy by his government. After two years on loan with Perugia and despite his inability to talk to the media in any way and despite living in Italy for four to five years, prompting the head of the academy that he played for to say he'd tell you I'm North Korean but I'm Italian as well he's lived here for four years and he can speak the language and cook Italian food, he still was limited in what he could do next. The issue is that the political ramifications and the sanctions against North Korea were mounting as North Korea continued to conduct nuclear testing and the wariness about paying Han Kwang Song any salary that could potentially inadvertently go towards funding North Korea's nuclear program were growing. Even with all of that going on, Juventus agreed to a tentative loan deal in 2019 to sign Han Kwang Song on a buy later deal. And over the course of that time, Han Kwang Song would play with the Juventus U23s, only being called up to the Juventus bench twice in this one season that he was on loan with Juventus. Now, according to Costarella, this lack of playing time was actually tied to some of the political issues around having Han Kwang Song on your team. For example, Sari really liked him. Han was always training with the first team when he got called up to the Serie A squad against Lecce. Then, of course, the political problems happened. What are those, might you ask? You see, the big issue for Juventus is that on December 20 22nd in 2017, all member states of the United Nations, which is basically everyone, were mandated to repatriate all North Koreans working in their countries within 24 months of that date which came due at the end of 2019. And Han Kwang Song's contract was signed on January 1st, 2020. So Juve signed him for more than 4 million pounds and that kicked in and six days later, because of UN sanctions, Juventus was forced to sell him and sell him to Qatar. In Qatar, he was able to get away with it a little longer. He played in 10 matches, scored three goals, had a few more goal contributions for Al Duhail uh, and helped lift the Qatari Stars League with them. But by September of 2020, it was, it was over. The transfer was eventually, after investigation, of course, found to have violated UN sanctions against North Korea and he stopped playing in September of 2020. And that was it. Like, actually. Now, Mauro Costarello said, we talk almost every day. I think he'll move to another country where he can play. There's talk of Malaysia, but given the fact that UN investigations and sanctions follow him wherever he goes, he hasn't laced him up and gone onto a field since September of 2020. And right now, he's still only 24. Last vestige we have of Han Kwang Song is him playing for the North Korean national team. But of course, they actually withdrew from the World Cup once the COVID-19 pandemic started. So Oh. Now, the mystery of football inside North Korea, which Han Kwang Song is likely, probably, it would make sense, involved in now, that, that is in a wonderful Bleacher Report article I've linked at the top of the description. But in terms of tracking what's happened to Han Kwang Song, I've given you all that I can. <laughs> He's gone. A player that Juventus spent more than four million pounds acquiring is a talented young player to develop, who scored a hat trick in Serie B at 18, who scored in Serie A at 18, who, who's made 12 
12 Serie A appearances has simply ceased to exist and ceased to exist less than a year after that deal was finalized. His career, internationally at least, is over. It's a shame to think about. The biggest shame is that this kid who obviously had a lot of potential and loved playing the game and made these friends in Italy has just been sucked back into this vortex of political drama emanating from the country he was born in. If Hong Kwang Song pops up again, you know we'll make a video about it to let you know what's going on and so you get the notifications and everything. Hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed the research that we did. If you hit the subscribe button, it encourages me to go read a bunch of articles and tell you about stuff that's happening. And if you want to just keep your binge watching rolling, which I totally respect, this is a video about the national team that disappeared. Actually, as a tie-in, it's in Qatar, a national team that vanished the same as Han Kwang Song.